Hey everyone, it's Nadia from Leo Dia Designs and I'm back with another tutorial. Today we're doing something a little different, a lot of fun, and um, we're actually going to be working with air dry clay today. And um, I'm going to be making these cute little leaves. Just check them out. They're so cute. They're a little embossed and they have some uh, foil in them. So we're going to be making these leaves and then we're going to be taking those and putting them in resin. So. I'm really excited about it. It's actually something I've been working on for a while. Like, honestly, I think I made these leaves about a month and a half ago <laughs> and I just kept postponing this tutorial because other things would keep coming up and you know how life goes. So I'm finally ready to to get this one going to show you guys. And like I said, we're going to be using air dry clay. I know that there are a lot of different types of like polymer clay that you can bake and that's definitely an option too here. So if you are someone who uses polymer clay and you want to use the kind that you can bake, you can definitely go ahead and do that. I picked the air dry just because I think that I believe it's less expensive. Plus, um, you know, it's for, you know, anybody could really use it. Like I literally took this from my kids <laughs> so, and, uh, and like I said, you can use it. And the other thing I like about it is that it is like a white color as you, or kind of a grayish color, as you can see here. So we can make them any color we want without actually having to buy different types of colors. And I'm sure that's possible with polymer clay as well. It's just I, the ones I've seen, um, they're obviously more expensive because it's a higher quality product, I believe. And you usually have to buy individual colors to really get those colors that you want. I could be wrong, but that's what I understand about it so far. And I'm going to try to learn more about that, too, because I just think that polymer art is beautiful as well. So and you know how you know how I am. <laughs> I have varied interest when it comes to art. So um, but for now, let's try the air, the air dry clay and see how this works out for us. And then um well, like I said, we're putting these into resin, which I will show you a bit later. But for now, I'm going to show you how to make how I made these leaves. So again, I took my air dry clay and I cut off a section. So this is my air dry clay here. And the first thing you have to do is kind of work with it here just to kind of warm it up. It's never going to be like perfectly smooth. At least that's my experience. It's still going to have kind of a texture to it, which in this case, I think is fine. Again, like if we want something super smooth, we would probably use the more professional clays for that. But again, for what I'm trying to do here, I'm not overly worried about that. So we're going to kind of get it to softness that makes it so that we can roll it out. All right. So we have that there. And I'm going to, like I said, I've already made what I'm going to be using in this tutorial, but I just want to show you how I made these. So I'm not going to be making um, all of what's here, just kind of give you an example of what I did. So <clears throat> we're going to get it so that it's, you know, kind of around a rectangle -ish shape. And don't laugh at me. <laughs> I don't have a rolling pin for it. I did have one. I actually stole one of my kids' um, Play-Doh rolling pins, but... I think they stole it back, <laughs> so I don't have it. But um, you can use like any kind of, you know, marker or whatever you have on hand. I mean, as artists, we are resourceful. We will figure it out. So anyway, so you get it to approximately um, the not quite the thickness that you want. You want it to be a little bit thicker than your final thickness that you want it to be. This is a little on the thin side, but it'll work. So once you get it similar to the thickness that you want, then what you want to do is I have some, this is kind of the rose gold leafing. And I just got a big package of this from Amazon. I don't know if you can see it in there, but it comes in all three colors and they're just sheets of this stuff. So, so I'm going to be using the rose gold and we're just going to lay that right on top of our, of our clay like so kind of smooth it on down and this is like super satisfying to feel but uh, so there we go so we smooth it on down again we're not too concerned about wrinkles and things like that and then what I have is this amazing little polymer clay roller it's a bit dusty um, and this is from the brand is V Clay Design and she's on Instagram and uh, she makes beautiful uh clay jewelry and things like that so she has all these great tools actually these little cutters are from her shop as well so I have this and I'm going to actually turn this one this way 
And now what we'll do is we're going to roll it. And, oop, and it's ideal to do it all in one roll to kind of get your perfect little uh, design. So like I said, we roll it out. It stretches out the foil so that it um, goes, kind of stays where the roller is rolling. And then it creates little areas where the clay is um, is kind of expanding. So, and I just kind of do a little tiny bit there. I mean, you don't really have to do that just to kind of flatten it all out. And like, and there we go. We have this really beautiful piece of oop, clay with rose gold designs on it. And again, I wasn't looking for the perfect um, roll on this because it's more for the texture. As you can see in my in my pieces, it's more for the texture. The rose gold isn't in all the little cracks and crevices. It's just in kind of some areas to kind of give some shine and just make it look a little pretty. So then we have that. And then once we have our, our clay ready, and again, if you're gonna be doing this many, you wanna obviously do a bigger portion or at least multiple of them um, so that you have enough for what we're doing here. But again, for the example, um, <clears throat> I made two different, I do have two cutters for two different sizes. So to show the difference, I think this is the small one. And then this was the large one. So you can get, you know, if you get both, you can actually do a lot of really nice things with them. So, so we have that. And then we would just take our cutter and we would literally just cut them out. Like so. And I like taking, you know, something that's a little bit flat to push that out. So we're not damaging the design. And then what I did is I just kind of tapped the edges in like so to get our shape. And there we go. That's one. So I'll do a couple more since we're going to be adding color to them. So that's another one there. And there we go. So now we have five little petals. And again, if you wanted to, you could arrange these in little flowers. You can do a lot of really nice things with them like that. So, but, so what we'll do now is while it's still, I guess, kind of damp, the, the clay, the clay is going to take quite a while to dry. I think when I did my original test, it took about a day to dry. So you do want to prep these well ahead of when you're going to resin with them. So you'll want to do them, like I said, a day or two ahead of time to really make sure they've completely dried out. And again, that would be the benefit if you want to use polymer clay. Uh, like I said, if it's like the Sculpty or Sculpty, Sculpty, I can't remember, <laughs> uh, Sculpty or Fimo or something like that. Because um, then you could bake those and make sure they're completely dried out and it'd be a lot faster of a process than um, letting this air dry. But again, we just, I wanted to try the air dry clay for this experiment. So now that we have this, what we want to do is add some color. Now I did test coloring them like, so I'm going to be using mica powder. I did test actually taking the mica powder and mixing it like in the clay beforehand where I actually, you know, kneaded it right into the clay and actually colored the clay first before I rolled it out and added the foil. And these ones here, I mean, they don't have the foil on them, but these ones here, this one actually has a coating on it, but you can see the color difference on these. So this one, you can actually see the mica's right in there. Um, and this one here. So you can, this one actually shows it the best because these ones, I think I added some varnish to them, but you can see this one here. This is with, I believe it was uh, the dark blue. Oh, it was a blue one that's not here right now, but this was with one of the micas that were a dark color, similar to this one. And it just, when it dried out, it completely just, it kind of like washes out the color 
a bit. You can see it here a little bit, but it washes out the color, just kind of makes a more muted pastel version. So if you want a muted or pastel version, you could definitely mix the mica right into the clay. And then this is what you're going to get for coloring of that. Um, it makes it a little bit unpredictable, but at least this way, you know, you'd be getting kind of a muted tone of that color. So that's what happens with those. And then uh, these ones here are, I did the way I'm going to show you now, where I actually am going to paint the mica on. So I want to show you that. And we're going to be um, using my gloss varnish, which is here. So my Duraclear gloss varnish, and we're going to be mixing it with mica. So let's do that now. Okay, so I'm going to be using my little, this piece of acetate just as like a palette um, instead of using my cups today, just because I don't really need a lot for the, sand, the examples that I'm going to be showing you. So I'll do, I think we're going to do about maybe three or four colors, three or four. So let's just do that. And we'll start with this one here. Now today I'm using May Spring colors. So I have four of their colors. I have... Uh, purple amethyst, indigo obelisk, obelisk, yeah, imperial emerald, and <laughs> green pyromorphite. Um, so these are the colors I'm going to be using. So let's start with this one here. And we'll just, we don't need a lot, but we are just going to mix that with our gloss varnish here to make ourselves a little pigment paste almost not a pigment actually it's not a pigment paste it's just really creating a paint almost so we'll do that like so um let me go into a quick time lapse i'll get the other colors mixed up for us and then we'll get into painting Okay, so we're back and let's start with our emerald green. Love this color so much. Okay, so what we'll be doing is, well, I'm gonna take this one here and we're just gonna be just literally painting it right on. So, and we're gonna paint it, but we're gonna also be kind of wiping it at the same, like we want it, we don't wanna leave a lot of paint on top of the, on top of the the gold sorry the rose gold foil we want to just have the color mostly pigment the uh, the clay you see that I hope so um like so and do the edges as best we can i don't know i mean actually they will kind of show on our poured piece but so anyway, so we'll do the edges like so. And like I said, we just, after you're done painting it, you want to just kind of wipe off any excess so that we still see that beautiful rose gold underneath, like so. <clears throat> there we go, oh, I just touched it, like so. All right, do, 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 pretty. All right, and like I said, we mix that with the gloss varnish. So that's gonna give it a nice seal at the same time. And I'll just show you how the other ones are gonna look. Okay, so we have, now I have painted hands. <laughs> so now we have um, our colors here. Actually, yeah, so we have our colors here now. And you can see how vibrant the colors are when you compare them to, you know, something like this. Like I said, if this is what the look that you're going for, then great, at least you know how to achieve that. But if you're looking for vibrant colors, I would suggest doing it this way. And I would also suggest, that you paint the, the add the mica mixed with the varnish while when the 
the clay is still fresh, like freshly rolled out because it still has that dampness to it and it's holding on to the, the foil. Now, the reason why I mentioned that is, for example, so this one here is one that I let dry. So just like how this one you see, I didn't add any um, varnish to it yet. I didn't add any color or varnish. It's just the clay and the rose gold on it. That's what this one was. Um, it didn't have the, it, it wasn't rolled out. I don't know if I have one that was rolled out. Uh, I think this one might have been one that's, but I actually sealed it. But you can see like the, once the clay dries, there's nothing holding that rose gold paper onto the clay. And that's what happened here. Like this had a nice layer of the rose gold on it, but once the clay dried, it the the rose gold paper literally just was falling off of it. So we want to make sure that, you, especially for something like this one, if we wanted to have just the natural clay color underneath it, then we would just clear varnish this one, right? So um, these ones, because they have the varnish mixed with the pigment, it's already kind of sealing it in. But this one, if you wanted to do something like that, you'd have to clear varnish it. So, so there we go. So that's what we have for our leaves. So you can see how these guys were made. And um, this one here, these ones here, I don't remember exactly. I think this one, what I did is I took um, a different color. It was a pink color mica, but then I, you can see, I don't know if you can see, I brushed, I had mixed the varnish with some of this pigment here, which is the DB Resin Products Chameleon Pigment Green Gold Red. And you can see it just gives a beautiful finish. If you had, like I said, this is the actual pattern. These lines on here are the actual pattern of this cutter, as you can see here. So this, if you just want to use the cutter by itself, this, this is the look that you would actually get. And like I said, I just mixed so a different pigment color and you can see there's even an ombre effect on that and I then glazed I just kind of sealed the whole thing with um, the the gloss varnish mixed with a little bit of this uh, mica powder so, so another effect that you can get with this as well but today we're going to be using these ones so like I said you will need to let this dry about a day um, or at least check it and make sure it's fully dry. You'll know when it's fully dry because, oh, I don't know if you can see it. So you can't tell right now, but this is um, because the whole thing is still damp. But once it starts to dry, the edges around the bottom, like you'll notice it more on the bottom, um, the edges around here will be turning more like a white color and the middle will still look kind of darker because um, it'll still be damp in the middle. And kind of like... Yeah, it's kind of, I mean, the same idea, I guess, like mud and clay, same thing. So um, it'll be, it'll become a lighter color once it's dry and then the middle will be darker. So once you flip it over like the next day and if this back is all the same color and it's dry, then you know that it's pretty much fully dried through. So anyway, so there you go for that. And one thing that does happen with this air dry clay that um, probably doesn't happen as much with the polymer clay is as it dries... Sometimes it starts to curl. So I don't know if you can see, you can see this one. It's not fully flat because I didn't press it down or anything. I just kind of left them like this to dry. And I'm okay with the shapes in here, the randomness of the shapes. But if you want yours to be flat, at some point, probably about halfway through the drying process, you're probably going to want to come in and lightly put something on top to kind of press them to flatten. Not enough to flatten out the design, like the embossing on it, but enough to kind of make sure the leaf doesn't curl up while it's drying. So keep that in mind as well. But like I said, for me, I wasn't overly concerned about that. Like you can see some of these are pretty warped, but I was okay with it. So, because again, we're going to be putting this under a layer of resin. I wasn't too worried. So anyway, so we're going to leave this to dry and uh, I'll be back with the next step. Okay, so we're back and I have already poured the base of my resin coaster here. And again, I, I make these coasters. I make a lot of my designs as coasters because I just kind of use them as like a mini canvas. And so this way I can test out ideas on a smaller scale as well as um, it just kind of gives us an idea of how something can look and then we can scale that up. So if we want to make it into a tray or a cake stand or anything that we want to make, we know that we can take what we're learning here in these techniques and create whatever we want with them. So, um, so this is 
my base and these are two colors so um oh, i didn't bring them but it's the, it's two colors from again from may spring it is the same dark green that we use that emeralds color and it's also their really dark blue and i'll list everything at the end of the video as well as in the description under the video so if you're looking for links or want to know where to shop or you're looking for discount codes look underneath the video in the description because i have a long list of everything that i use as and what i recommend as well as any if i have discount codes i include them there so check there if you need if you're looking for any of these items so again two beautiful mica powders i mixed and i'm going to show a video is probably in one of the corners here that's going to show um, just the basic pour i did with these two to get this so there you go so now that we have our base poured and we have our leaves ready, what I want to do is I kind of wanted to have a pattern similar to how they're laid out here. So, but I do want to see if I can maybe curve it a little bit. So they're kind of like this. And like I said, it's nice when you can kind of play with the elements to see you know, what's going to look best here so just move that up a bit and let's see if I maybe nope that one doesn't want to be turned mm -hmm. so something like that is what I'm kind of going for here and before so we'll be using our gloss varnish to kind of glue these down so they stay in place but the first thing i want to do before i do that is um i want to add a little bit of a line so let me see if i can flip this one if it makes a difference now see how this one is rocking you can see because it's curved so this so this is where it would be beneficial that if they were flat um, I'm going to be adding quite a bit of resin on top of these, so I don't think it's going to be an issue, but having them flat would, you know, make it a little bit easier for you there. So, all right. So before I glue these down, you'll see that I'm making a bit of a space in the middle here. And that's because I want to add a, a stem down my, down the middle of those leaves there. So I have my Serenia Relief from Pebio and today I'm using my Verme <laughs> Vermeil. I know that's not how you pronounce it so I know I'm gonna get a lot of comments <laughs> of how to pronounce it properly but um so this is there it's kind of like a mix between regular gold and like a copper gold it's kind of the in-between color so that's that and I'm just going to create a simple curve line down here so starting here going down like so There we go. And I did want the line to be a little bit on the thicker side, so I went over it a couple times there just to kind of get that thickness that I wanted. Obviously, if you want to use a gold marker or some other way of, you know, even just paint, painting that line in, you definitely could do that. Um, I just, I'm so used to my outliner, I use it for everything <laughs> now. So, and then what we'll do, and now I did this I'm going to do this the messy way, but obviously if you guys want to use a paintbrush and do it neatly, you 100% can. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to literally take my gloss varnish. I'm just going to drip like two drips where I want the leaf to go. And now we have to be really careful here. If you do decide to do the line the way I've done it here is so that um, we don't touch the line because it's wet right now. Right. So um, if you want to wait till it's dry to be safe then you know give it like 20 minutes to half hour and then you'd be able to come in and do that without having to worry about possibly smudging it but I like living dangerously <laughs> so um there we go now we're just gonna make them a little bit closer watch I'm totally gonna smudge it on camera it's gonna happen All right, 
so there we go we do have the one pink one here it's odd man out but uh, I like it so it's gonna stay so there we go so we have like a little stem and I actually already did the other one so here we go look how cute aren't they so cute um so there oh, I'm gonna move that one down a bit so there we go so simple and easy I'm gonna actually show you this one here look at that just so many cool textures and colors and a bit of shine. I know there's no glitter on this one guys but uh I think we're gonna leave it like that just because the rose gold is doing its work here it's just it's making it everything look pretty and a little bit shiny and it's just contrasting so nicely against the dark background so I think we're going to leave it um, as is and then this one if you guys want to see it that's what it looks like here and of course so now we're going to let this dry it's going to need a couple hours to dry um, and then once we have like I said once that serenity relief outliner is dry and the um, varnish that we're using as a glue is dry I'm going to go after in and actually um, just pour clear resin right over top of it and then we will let that cure uh, overnight and we will unmold them in the morning Okay, so we are now done. I, um, as you saw in the video, I did the top coat um, over the leaf pattern. And then I actually went in and did a second top coat as well. So you can see my edges are looking really nice. I could go in and paint the edges of this, but I'm not actually sure that I want to. I think I kind of like it the way it is here. So I think I'm going to end up leaving them just because it's really neat actually to also see through the side <laughs> and see the, uh, to see the, the leaves in there as well. So, and I really, really like the background on these coasters, that mix of those two colors. And again, I'll list them in the description below the video. And we have our other one here looking pretty I really like how these turned out and like I said I I love the texture of the clay like I mean we could have drawn these leaves or this kind of a pattern with our outliner and then filled it with glitter or pigments or you know the stained glass style like we could do any of the things that we've normally done with that but I think the embossed clay just gives it another dimension that we you know, aren't usually getting with a lot of our resin pieces. I mean, normally we're having to add, like I said, crystals or other things in there to get texture. This just gives us another option on how to add texture and some sparkle in there as well with the foil. And the polymer clay jewelry side of art is just, it's so expansive. They have so many great tools and great designs. So it really allows us to expand our, um, our own, artistic options when it comes to if we can learn how to utilize those in resin art so I think that's really neat as well and like I said um, for those of you who are either already interested in polymer clay or maybe you already use it or maybe you just think it's a better option for you I think those would work perfectly well too if, if you guys want me to test it out let me know and I will definitely do a video on that as well so I can test it I don't have any polymer clay so I'd have to you know, get some and do that, which I don't mind doing. So that's if you guys want me to do that, we can do that. We can compare the difference between the two. But like I said, I think the air dry clay gives us a lot of flexibility as well when it comes to being able to paint them the colors we want to be able to add our own additives to it. And uh, yeah, I just think either way, I think both can work. Um, and that's the great thing with art is that we're trying to see, um, especially with resin, we're trying to see how versatile and how we can mix and match styles and things like that. So in any case, I'm really happy with how these turned out. I hope you guys like them too. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, what other kind of designs do you think you'd use um, this technique for? And uh yeah, so, and obviously, if you decide to try this technique, whether you're on Instagram or, I mean, actually, for those of you who are on YouTube or, or who are creating your own videos, and if you want to tag me on your YouTube videos, feel free to do that too. I'd love to see what you're creating out there. And those of you on Instagram who are creating, 
And if you want to tag me and uh, use my new hashtag, uh, Leah D inspired me, there's a chance that you'll get uh, featured in my story um, when I do that. About once a week or so, I go in and I go through that hashtag and I pick a couple, um, usually about four or five, um, I, you know, art pieces that I think are really cool, but with utilizing the technique, especially ones that are creative and creating their own style with the technique. I'd like to go in and showcase those as well. So for sure. If, and those of you who just like watching me create, thank you very much for being here. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And leave a comment below. All these interactions really do help the channel. So I thank you guys so much and I will see you in the next video. Bye!